What is up guys? Today we're gonna be working on a little bit of conditioning with a style of heat training, but for a handstand, for especially for the strength on our shoulders and the stability on our core, and strength on our core and stability on our shoulders. What I mean is that we're gonna be going for four blocks, which each block is two exercises, two shoulder exercises, then two core exercises, then two shoulder, and then two core exercises. The first exercise, so we have block number one. Let me actually go to the routine. So it is eight exercises, but I want you guys to start think, thinking of blocks. And a block would be the first two exercises, which is bent arm presses. And right away, we're going with wall plank. So make sure that uh, if you're doing uh, bent arm presses freestanding, make sure that you're very close to the wall because there is no rest in between those two. Literally, it's like, should be like one to two seconds. As soon as you finish the presses, 40 seconds, you move on to the isometric hold, which is 20 seconds. So we're doing one dynamic exercise, and then we're doing one static exercise for our stability. So for the uh, presses, I want you guys to go into bent arm, just because uh, we're working actually mostly on that pushing strength, and the only, the only requirement that we truly need for a straight arm scapula strength, like dynamic exercises, would be press to handstand, a straight arm press to handstand. If you really wanna get the press to handstand, you can go for straight arms, where I encourage you to really build that strength of the shoulders. So for the press is hands shoulder width apart. I'm just gonna show many, many, many variations, and then you guys can pick which one suits you better. And as always, you can change the same exercise within the same routine, and yeah, or within, when you do it the next time, you switch it. And within the same round. So the first one, the easiest one, I would say, would be bend arms, bend legs. You tuck it in and you stack your legs on top, elbows are in, and then you push yourself back up. An easier one would be doing like a little hop and not bending your arms that much. You go from here and you lean forward, and then you push yourself up. Try to, when you get to the top, when you're doing this type of presses, and especially if you're doing one after the other, it is very, very hard to just go up and your head is through and your shoulders are in completely perfect alignment. Here we're working mostly on a strength, like I said, so don't worry too much if you're... Uh, let me do another demo demonstration and then don't worry too much if your shoulders are closed. So you can do the same with your legs straight, still doing bent arm. So look at how I lean, my head is almost Almost not. Actually, it should form like a triangle with my hands. <laughs> that took me way too long. It should make like a triangle with my hands. And then you push up. Now, when you do a straight legs and bent arms, it's um, easier to control just because you have less variables. It's when you strengthen your arms and you strengthen your legs at the same time, that causes your balance to suffer just because you are impacting up. And that's why I really want you guys to go slow in these exercises, even though it is a conditioning, even though it's a kid workout or however you want to call it, we form is everything and you guys know that, especially when it comes to the handstand. You can do that if you want to go for straight arms. You can go for straight arms. And you hold it and make sure, let's say you're doing bent arms, when you're coming down, come down as slow and as controlled as possible. And again, you can switch it up. You can go for a straight arm coming up and then bent arms coming down. You can play around and not only work on your strength, but also on your uh, CNS and proprioception and awareness of your body. If that's too hard, go for several blocks, go here. I think I've shown, I've shown this reel, one of the HP checks. Grab your triceps in, lean forward, bring one leg up. Make sure you're not sinking down. You need to be like way too strong to actually push up. And look at my elbow, which is behind my wrist. I want it to go forward. You go forward, which is a fear, but you have less weight to actually push up. Then use your fingers, really use that flexor group to prevent yourself from falling forward, and then come all the way down. If pressing is still not an option for you, then 
I would do like a little hop and if balance is still not an option for you, I would do a little hop against the wall. So it'll look something like this. So you go here, lean forward, make sure you are at about an arm distance away. It's a good place to start. You're gonna be arching your back if you touch the wall. So try to just have it as a reference. You do like a little hop and then you press up. And then the wall is there. If the wall is there, try not to use your feet, but press that where that way you're also working on your posterior chain, which is overbalancing and your ability to actually come back into the hand. That's for another video. And that was actually a way too much of a hop and my arms were straight just because I'm very used to do a straight arm presses. So I'm gonna do last demonstration with the little hops, you lean forward from here to jump and then you press. And then when you come down, you can do several things, but since you're doing bent arms, try to tuck it in by pressing with your fingers and then coming all the way down. You can do it in the parallel and go to L seat. You can do L seat to handstand if you want to take a step further. Try to, the, the goal here is to build that strength. It doesn't really matter if you press up and you fall. It doesn't matter if you press up and you touch a wall. But as always, try to, every time that you encounter this workout, do it with better form. And if you don't want to do it in that heat style and you really want to put emphasis on technique, then forget about the timer, forget about everything. Just focus on technique because bend on presses is not easy. After you're done with that, wall planks, well, we've done it a lot of times. I just realized that this is actually higher, so <laughs> that's harder. Um, if you want to make it easier on the previous one, just elevate your feet. Wall plank is a tricky one. Wall plank, I want you to start on the top, protract your scapula and bring your hips down. From here, you're gonna begin lowering your legs and you can see that my shoulders are above my wrist or even forward. If you are right here, nothing wrong with this. You can wrap your triceps in and work on a different muscle. You will be more activating your lat because you're actually trying to pull down. But if you have shoulder problems or if you're hypermobile, it might be dangerous for your shoulders. If that is too hard, if you're gonna do it with the wall, just put your feet towards the wall, but just do like a regular plank and be right here. If you wanna put more emphasis on the front deltoid, just do a plank thing, basically. But we're working towards the handstand, so ideally try to work on that plank. We're going for 40 seconds on the presses. No stop, you go into the isometric hold for 20 seconds and you rest, actually it was 40, 20, no, we're going for actually 30, 15, my bad. And then the resting time is 15. So you got one minute in total. So 45 seconds of work and 15 seconds of break. Apologies for that. The second block is gonna be hanging. Now, as I was doing this workout, I actually did, okay, so we're doing some wrist extension in my handstand. Then hanging will release that tension. But when you're in a handstand, even though you're in wrist extension, you are using your wrist flexors to actually prevent yourself from falling forward. So just a little tip when you're doing those uh, presses, try to not lean that much that you need to use way too much force. Try to always keep the weight right here. If you're advanced, do your best to use the less of your fingers as you possibly can because when you, your forearms are getting tired is when you can begin to press up. Talking too much again. <laughs> Hand from the bar, shoulder width apart. Why shoulder width apart, especially here, even a little bit closer? Because we are trying to replicate a handstand. From here, we're going to work on compression in your core. If you are hypermobile, I would recommend an active or semi-active semi hang, which is what I do because the shoulders are like way too much open. But if you, are you have tightness in your shoulders, then you can relax, and this, is, this will be basically a handstand position. From here, you use your flexors to actually wrap the bar. And toes to bar, you guys know how to do it. Just go up and down, up and down, and try to flex the least amount of possible from your, from your spine, and only working on that hip flexion. I know it's like very, very, very hard, but try to avoid the using of your lats, which is what causes uh, tension in your shoulder flexion and doesn't allow you to get straight. 
after you go for the 30 seconds, then you go for 15 seconds of hold. So basically you're hanging on the bar for 45 seconds. Again, toes to bar, come down, and then you hold. Now it's a hollow body hold, meaning that you hold all your body. But what I want you to do is posteriorly tilt your pelvis, but you see how my legs go forward. I want to create hip extension and open through the shoulders and hold that. Before I'm so killing me already. <laughs> Again, if you're hypermobile and you have shoulder problems, really be careful. Handstands, especially when we get into hollow backs and stuff, it can be very dangerous to be here. So make sure you are always trying to keep that tension if you have more than 180 degree shoulder flexion. That is the second block. You are going to rest in between blocks. Again, 15 seconds. We move on back to shoulders. We're doing shoulder taps for, now we're re uh, inverting the time. So we're going for 15 seconds on the dynamic one and we're going for 30 seconds on the isometric hole. Why? Because 30 seconds of shoulder taps is not easy. <laughs> I really find <laughs> Shoulder taps variations is simple. If you have a freestanding handstand and you can manage you get two or three and then if you fall and then you go you can go back up or if you feel like you are dying and you only got one or two do that and then just go against the wall shoulder taps are not easy at all especially for balance and especially after doing all that that your your flexors are going to be on fire if not <laughs> you tell me in the community so from here um, if you go here it's a little bit easier but uh, to work towards the one arm. I really encourage you to work on this motion right here. Now, when you do that, you need to shift the weight towards the hand that you're going. So if I'm shifting towards, uh, to the arm that, to the hand that is actually supporting yourself. So if I'm lifting my, my left, I do this. And I do this, trying to keep your body. This is very, very hard, but trying to shift your entire body. So basically this is shifting and this will be tilting. And you can tilt from your lower and from your upper, but try to do this if you are doing weight distribution. Again, that's an advance. That's like when you get to one arm handstand. If you only shift, it is super, super hard to balance, but it requires less strength. So depending on your uh, strength, you might tilt or you might shift. Whichever it is, point your toes, good form, and egos aside, if you're gonna do shoulder taps with without the wall, then don't do it. You get into the handstand, press. I'm gonna start with the right, so I'm leaning towards the left. Touch, and I fail. <laughs> so with the shoulder taps, good tip, best tip is momentum. You find that momentum, and it's okay to not land in the same place. I'm like stuck right here, which also plays with the mind. So do it in an open, open space. Here we go up into your handstand. Let's see if I can get a couple ones. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> so you do as many as you can within that uh, 20 second, 15 second range. And then right away, you go into holding the handstand. Variation for the sh shoulder taps. If you wanna do a freestanding again, opposite shoulder. If not, chest to wall is the way to go. And the same thing here. You point your toes, you open, through the shoulders and push with your scapula, extend your your shoulders, posterior to your pelvis, find that spot and lean and touch, lean and touch, lean and touch, lean and touch. So I would really recommend actually going against the wall, even if you have a solid, solid handstand, unless you can manage to get a couple ones and you are trying to work on balance. But again, this is more of a stability one. If you cannot yet do a handstand hold against the wall, which if you cannot do yet handstand hold against the wall, just the wall, this workout might be a bit too hard, but we can always modify it, as always. So you can do it on pike, and you can do the same thing. You can touch right here, or you can touch right here. If that's too easy, you can go elevated pike, basically elevating your feet, or if that's way too hard, you can start practicing weight shifting in plank. Again, 15 seconds shoulder tap, right away 30 seconds hands and hold. In hands and hold you can do a freestanding or you can do it against the wall, chest facing the wall ideally. If it's too hard, just back facing the wall. 
Next one, we go back to, next one, finally. <laughs> we go to the seven and eight exercise, which is the fourth block. And in that block, we are going back to our core and our shoulders too, <laughs> in the opposite motion. So we're gonna be resisting shoulder, shoulder flexion, per se. So you can grab some dumbbells or you can do it without dumbbells, without any weight. We're gonna begin with the dynamic one for 15 seconds. What are you gonna do? You're gonna start here, if you're using dumbbells. Then I want you to, your legs to lift your feet, but only using the strength of your core. If that doesn't happen, that means that you have either excessive anterior pelvic tilt, nothing wrong with that, we can correct that, that's all we're here for, and it's really correct that, I don't, I don't like the term because it's not really uh, something bad to happen. But if you do have problem activating the core, start right here, from here, hollow up your body. That way, you start coming down with your legs first, then when you feel a little bit of tension, not your maximum, then is when I want you guys to focus more on the shoulders and try to get it as far as possible. And then if you can get here and still keep your low back touching the ground, then you go here. And if you can still maintain this, then you go here and you hold it. Once again, if you are hypermobile, be really careful with putting extra pressure in the shoulders. And if this is 15 pounds, and it's actually heavier than I intended to, to grab it. Go really light and really just focus on stabilizing the shoulder girdle and in the range of motion that you can control. You can play around again. One day you may lower all the legs down and work more on that core strength. And other days you might just keep your legs up and work on opening through the shoulders if you actually need more shoulder flexion than actually core strength, which that's another topic for Hansons. Um, it is actually the dynamic one. That's the last one, which is the hole that we go for 30 seconds. The dynamic one would be the same, like finding that spot and coming up. Here, I really want you to open the shoulders, actually. Try to elevate as well, like replicate the Hansen as much as possible. And from here, you're gonna lower until you can. If this happens, back off. So if you're here, we need to find the spot and then bring it back up. And if you're here, if this doesn't happen, just bring it here. That doesn't happen. Let me demonstrate it. Like a regular hollow body hole. You begin with your arms up, legs up, lower both at the same time and find that spot. Find it here, again, shoulders or core depending, and you're gonna work on leg raises. So really controlling that movement, extending rotating shoulders, and make sure you're going shoulder width because if you grab two dumbbells and you're right here, everyone can do that. <laughs> that would be cheating. Again, the dynamic one in this case is 15 seconds and the isometric call would be uh, 30 seconds. Then by the end of the round, you rest for two minutes or three minutes, depending on how you're feeling. And you do this routine two, three, or four times. It only takes four minutes for the routine and if you rest two minutes, 36 minutes, if you do it three times at 18 minutes, trust me, your hands and game is just going to skyrocket. So that's it for today, guys. See you next time. Peace out. All right, guys. So we begin in 10, 8, 5. Let's go for those presses. Bend arm, straight arm with the wall, whichever you prefer. Remember that even though it's a heat workout, we're training a skill. So try to control every movement. Try to strengthen your hands and when you go up. Break. Stayed by the bell. Well plank. Adjust your hands accordingly. Try to be as parallel to the floor as possible. And breathe. Deep press the shoulders and break. So 15 second break, we got 10 left. Now to the bar, you might wanna do some release on your flexor groups. We're gonna be hanging for one minute. 
Okay, let's go. Try to grab a shoulder width to replicate the handstand. And exhale every time that you're going up. You're going up. Keep it there, not too tight, but whole body, like your hips posteriorly tilted, but extend through the hips. Active, if you're hypermobile or passive, if you need some mobility in your life. Now we switch to 20, 40, hands and shoulder taps. I'll try one, freestanding, but let's see. <laughs> okay, stay for the belt. Hands and hold. Okay, got five seconds. If you can go with good form, take advantage of them. And then you get tired, you're gonna do the other one. Laying hole by hole, leg raises for 20 seconds. Lay down. Lay here. Go up. And down. Low back, now pull. If your low back start to arch, 45 by bringing your shoulders up or your legs up. If you want to work more on shoulder flexion, or be completely still to the ground. So we're big on breaking form. You guys keep going and stop. <laughs> So I felt like my back was beginning to arch and even raising my, my legs, my back was still arching. And for me, working on this range of motion was not that effective. So it would have been better to just stop and then go through the movement. But again, this is your workout. I adjusted according to your level. You can do it two, three, or four times. It is a killer on the forms and a good indicator that that first of all, handstand actually take the breath out of you. And second, your flexor groups, even though we are in wrist extension, are as important as your extensor group. I'm pretty sure this one got tired before everything else. People think it's the core, shoulders and forearms, and you're gonna have an amazing handstand. So, hope that helps. See you next time, guys. Peace out.